Hi, this is Maze. Book 2, Chapter 10, Part 2. <clears throat> the world around us had its own highs and lows. The boarding house a microcosm. Black was enjoying himself putting bad magic on humans. Any man, woman, or child would fall in line to fill the gnawing emptiness he hollowed out in them. Don't ask me how the hell he did it or what his motivation. He must have lured them to him with some vague promise of contentedness. If only I could see through human eyes. When all he really offered would make them obsolete. He shined them on all right, and they kept on coming. Any time I saw one of them pale and glossy faced and unlike their former selves, my hatred toward black grew. He turned them out like zombies and I suppose he would use them now to do anything he needed done. I don't know. I didn't really keep a finger on that black-hearted pulse for very long. For what was he to me? Just another malified, and his kind came a dime a dozen. But for some reason they started gravitating toward us, these hollows he made, creeping up the stairs like shadows and congregating by our door of all the goddamn doors they could have chosen endlessly knocking in an odd and delicate way, a kind of knuckle rapping like they were trying to tell if the door was hollow. Oh, good Lord, it was a terrible sound, like they were tapping on themselves to see if they were hollow. I would open the door and they would be standing there expectantly, waiting for me to speak or command them or who the hell knows. We were baffled. We could push right past them. They wouldn't stop us or say anything. But I began to use the window to get out, holding on to the gutter as I walked the wall down. Anything to avoid the hollows. They kept huddling around our door. The packies herded them down and out many times, but they came back. Many of them lived in the building. If we were sleeping, they often woke us. There was no use to try and ignore them. That awful sound of a knuckle on the door, almost imperceptible, but when you realize it wasn't imagined well, it may as well have been the goddamn telltale heart it was so penetrating. Maze would get fierce and scare them away, but they would come back, knocking only quieter, an eerie sort of tap tapping now, quiet as rain on the window, which would have been soothing if it were rain, but since it was them, and I could see in my mind their glossy, blank, zombie faces pressed up close to the door as they listened for the hollow and felt it resonate with their insides, emptied by the malified spell. Well, sure was unbearable. We were losing sleep and patience. It would have been nice and rather convenient if they could have satiated our thirst, but they had been hollow to the tangy energetic. We finally devised a plan so we wouldn't have to get up and go to the door and send them off. We brought one of the suckers in, a teenage lad who had once had such a promising human life ahead of him. And Maze held him down while I laid hands on him so I could get a feel for the empty space inside. And once I had a strong enough vibration, I motioned for Maze to let him go, then set about formulating a spell of wholeness by which we could send them away for a while. They would for sure be back once the wave of emptiness flooded them again, but it bought us some time. I would have taken them in my arms and just held them, I swear, especially the hollowed children, were they not so sickening and repulsive to me now. Shells of humans, some kind of zombies.